on a night approaching freezing in Kent. Hello. One woman approaches everyone with warmth. Hi, my name is Tina and I'm with Salvation Army Street Level. She's helped hundreds find jobs and a home. It's pretty cold out here right now and what we really like to do is try and work on eliminating those barriers and putting you into some housing. As the Street Level team does their January rounds, Hi guys. a driving factor motivates them. How you doing? Hypothermia. Try and stay warm. Hypothermia is real. An invisible, silent risk. 911 emergency. With the winter months, it's the complications that hypothermia adds to the calls we already go on. King County's Medic One Paramedic and Division Chief Evan Van Otten says hypothermia can be the nail in the coffin when it comes to survival for anyone needing medical help. If it's a, you know, a medical emergency, like an overdose or a, um, a heart attack, if you add hypothermia into that, it increases mortality and morbidity. There's been a recent spike in hypothermia-related deaths, both nationally and locally. I pulled data from the last 20 years for both King County County and Washington State, and the numbers show a similar trajectory. From 2005 to 2014, the number of hypothermia related deaths in King County was five to six people per year and statewide was 31 to 32 people per year. Those numbers skyrocketed in the decade after. From 2015 to 2024 in King County, the number of people who died from hypothermia tripled to 16 to 17 people and statewide doubled to 63 to 64 people dying per year. Now experts are trying to get to the root cause of why deaths are on the rise. This invisible killer is something National Weather Service meteorologist Reed Wolcott is studying. You don't know that you're in trouble until it may be too late to mitigate some of those impacts. Yeah, it's not as like in your face as a right. hurricane or yes. tornado. Yes, you don't have things being thrown at you. He's part of a national team currently developing the framework for new cold weather products, which will vary nationally region by region because different parts of the country are better equipped for winter weather extremes. Up in the the upper Midwest, you're talking negative 30, degree, 30 degrees for a cold weather advisory. Looking at recent history, the three deadliest months in King County when it comes to hypothermia correlate exactly with extreme weather events. So when we're seeing these weather events that are more extreme, we see the direct result in fatality. Yes, yes, absolutely. A massive snowstorm in February of 2019 killed 11 people. The December 2022 ice storm left 12 people dead and the January 2024 cold snap killed 12. Reed says the cause is not just cold, but the addition of winter weather. I haven't seen a real clear signal of increasing cold weather events, but there have been numerous winter weather events um, over the course of this this time frame. So factoring cold with precipitation, yes, ice, yes. snow. Yeah, yeah, that, that combination, the cascading impacts. But he says they're looking into other factors as well. But it may be that we have uh, a greater population of those experiencing homelessness or those with underlying medical conditions. In King County's data that details hypothermia deaths in the last 20 years, there are many people who were unhoused but there were also people who did have homes. An 89-year-old woman named Velma, who was found on the concrete outside her house by a neighbor in 2023. 75-year-old Riley, who was found in an unheated house during frigid temperatures in 2022. Those just a few of the people with homes. However, people living outside are feeling the brunt of this impact. King County's annual homeless count shows an increase in the unhoused population in the last decade. There were close to 9,000 unhoused people in 2014 to now more than 16,000 in 2024. We have not even hit our coldest spell for Washington yet. People like Tina see that trend. So more people are out on the streets. They've lost their homes, foreclosures, apartment rents have gone up. And as someone who once lived on the streets herself and knows the brutal reality. It's gonna get really cold out here. She's making sure everyone finds warmth this winter to see the tears flow from their eyes like they have faith and they have some hope and you've taken that inside of you and it's made them happy that's a big deal
We have had some really cold nights. So mm -hmm. how cold does it have to get for it to be really dangerous that it could actually kill someone? Right, Joyce, that was the question that I wanted to answer. And after talking to all of these experts and doing my own research, it's clear there's no firm answer on this. I pulled data for the low temperatures on every single night that someone in King County died over the last 20 years. Temperatures become fatal from the teens to as warm as the mid 50s. So it really just depends on the person, those under underlying health conditions, age, access to heat, so much more. And that is why this makes it such a dangerous element. Wow, and exposure. And we know it's gonna get cold in the days ahead, so something to really think about. Leah, thank you. Yes.